Hi everybody, uh, welcome, thanks for tuning in on another episode to learn more about this amazing technique that Professor Wan Moon has given to the authoring profession, uh, what we know as MSE. And just so we're clear, MSC is mid-face skeletal expansion. Uh, with me is my orthodontic colleague, Dr. Isabel. Uh, and uh, today we have one of our favorite patients, uh, Karina. Uh, Karina is a speech pathologist who has come to a lot of our lectures and obviously has learned about what we do in children when it comes to widening their palate and helping improve their breathing. You know, And I think uh, poor speech and lower tongue position all kind of related, right? Mm -hmm. um, so you want to just start by telling us a little bit about your orthodontic experience as a teenager, I guess, uh, uh, with uh, what type of orthodontics you had. Yeah, so I've always been a mouth breather and I'm sure that's not helped with the development of my palate. Yeah. Um, and so I went and had braces as a teenager and yes, they removed multiple teeth as well. Um, and I guess for me, the braces were more about um, the focus of making my teeth straighter, but they didn't actually address uh, any of the issues with having a narrow palate, yeah. um, which obviously was impacting my breathing. Yeah, and that would have been me 35 years ago. So mm. yeah. uh, uh, I guess things have changed a long way. Nowadays, if we just line up the front teeth, but we don't fix the jaw, we don't improve the breathing, I guess it's... Uh, for the patient, not the ideal long-term solution. Now, if you don't mind, I'm just going to show the uh, profile. Karina, as you can see, uh, has biskeletal retrusion. And if we look at her lateral cephalometric radiograph, um, we can see that she's actually got what we call a class two jaw. Now, class two jaw means the lower jaw is behind the upper jaw. But in Karina's case, like many adults, um, the upper jaw is really the culprit. It's narrow, so the lower jaw can't go forward. Now, if we look closely here, you can see why Karina had all these issues. She had um, a very narrow airway. And the first thing I did after I looked in your mouth, we sent you for a sleep study, right? Mm -hmm. And the sleep study came back with sleep apnea as the yes. diagnosis. Yeah. I saw you also had some nasal dramas going on. You mm -hmm. had a deviated septum. You had large turbinate. So mm -hmm. I sent you to my colleague, uh, Dr. Lowinger, very, very capable, you know, as a throat doctor. Hope you're happy with him. Yes, yeah, yeah. he was great. Uh, and then... Um, so we sorted that part, but I think what people need to understand is when you're talking about total nasal breathing, you're talking about three elements, not just what goes on here, but also the floor of the nose, which is where we come, the palate, also the lip seal and the position of the tongue. If you can get your tongue up on your palate and away from the back of your throat, that's helping all sorts of uh, uh, collapsible areas when it comes to sleep apnea. Mm -hmm. um, can I ask another question? Mm -hmm. You've had the expansion and it's gone really well. I'll yeah. touch a little bit on how that's gone. I know, uh, you know, people are always worried about what's that big gap going to be. And you, you, you've got an amazing big gap between yes, your front yeah. teeth, which for you, you're probably going, oh my, why did I do this? But for us, it's like, yeah, that's yeah. what we're looking that's for, right? right? Um, so if I was to compare your initial breathing mm -hmm. to what happened post in nose and throat to now what's happened post uh, MSC. Can you give us some insight into that? Yeah, so I really could not breathe through my nose at all before. Um, after I had the septoplasty and inferior turbinate reduction, um, I was able to start to be able to breathe through my nose. Mm -hmm. um, so that was great, feeling like I could start to breathe through my nose for the first time. Um, and then definitely after having the MSE and the expansion done, it's been like a big change again where I can breathe through my nose so much better. Yeah. Um, it's still not natural for me. I yeah. know that I still go back to mouth breathing a lot of the time, but with my functional therapy down the track, that will hopefully yeah. make and, that. And I think that's, habit. you've hit the nail on the head there. A lot of speech pathologists come to our lectures because they want to learn more about my functional therapy. Mm. And we tell them that you've got to get the uh, form before you get the function. Yeah. So basically, a lot of our patients, they're tongue-tied, they have a narrow palate, um, et cetera, et cetera. So what we do, we widen the palate first. Mm. We then give them the exercises that you help us with. We release, say, the tongue tie. We then teach where the tongue should be. And that's what we call rehabilitation of the airway. Yeah. So you can fix it with ear, nose, and throat. You can improve it with expansion. But what's going to keep it in the right position? That's where my functional therapy is really important. Mm. Is well, can we just look at, say, the upper arch when we started? So um, Karina had this very narrow palate. And you can see there's been extraction of the premolars, which is a classic 
orthodontic way to camouflage her jaw pattern. So Karina had what's called class two, here's her upper teeth, here's her lower teeth, and she's had that done. Now what we're gonna do is push everything forward again. And we're gonna start by widening the upper jaw. Now her widening went extremely well. I think we're there at um, 50 turns out of the maximum 90. We were wanting to go for 12 mils, but we only really needed 10 and it's, it's gone extremely well. And if we look at say the, um, the frontal smile, uh, shot for the teeth uh, when we started, and then we look at the equivalent, there's what we're looking for. Now, in previous videos, we've talked about the technical side of how we get those teeth together bodily rather than tipping, but really, I just want you to look at this arch form. Can I just open that photo here? Yeah, you can see how narrow Karina's arch form was. Now, I'm not talking about breathing here, I'm talking about just cosmetically. These are called buccal corridors. And uh, as we age, we want those not to increase because this support of our mid-face diminishes. If we look at the smile now, so even though there's that nice big gap there, look at those buccal corridors, they're eliminated. That's an amazing thing for us if I put my orthodontic hat on, mm. right? Um, and continuing on with the treatment that we're going to do for you, after we've closed up that upper arch and give you a nice arch form, uh, then we're going to start working on getting that lower jaw forward because mm. in your case, it's kind of a combination type uh, uh, type treatment. Yeah. Um, can, can I just ask, um, during this process, what has been the worst part of the exercise? What's been mm -hmm. the best part? Yeah, okay. Probably the worst part for me um, is the fact that obviously with expanding the yeah. upper jaw, it means then that you don't always have a great bite. Yeah. So I found that at times it's hard to chew and to eat different foods. Sometimes you could eat something one day and then a few days later you couldn't chew yeah. it anymore. Yeah, because it's constantly um, changing. Yeah, that's yeah. And exactly I think right. In your case also, you had a history of bruxism or, yes. or clenching, yeah. which is again very common in, in sleep apnea. Yes. Uh, so the forces in your mouth are probably five, ten times uh, of normal. Yeah, but yeah. I, I hear you. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so then definitely what happened with that, with my bite being off, um, it did make my TMJ issues that mm -hmm. much worse. Yeah. Um, so I did struggle with that a bit through the process. Okay, okay. Um, but I understand that the end point will hopefully be that that will also reduce. Yeah, and I think a lot of that will be improved as we change your lower jaw position yes, yeah. to get your what we call TMJ in a more stable position mm -hmm. than where it is now because yeah. Your traditional orthodontics, you know, has kind of kept the wrong jaw mm -hmm. <laughs> in the wrong position yeah. and camouflage the front teeth to meet that, you know. So what we're trying to do is unlock that, push over your foot. With some patients who've had big teeth out like you've had, mm -hmm. um, we actually reopen the spaces for implants. But it's a case-by-case -case basis. Yeah. In your case, because we've got that nice arch form now, we can actually bring all the back teeth forward and sort of uh, close up those previous extraction spaces of yours. That was the worst part. That what was the, the best part. part? Sorry, the best part. The best part is that all my life as well, I felt like my tongue was too big for my mouth. Yep. And now yep. I feel I actually have room for it. So yep. I can put my tongue up um, to the roof of my mouth. And that brings yes. us into a very popular social media uh, phenomenon, if you want to call it. It's called mewing. I don't know whether you've heard mm -hmm. of that. Yeah. So mewing is a form of myofunctional therapy. It's basically putting your tongue in the correct position, good strong masticatory forces to sort of develop your jawline. And it's all about changing, you know, backward growth and posture to forward growth posture. Now, obviously mewing works really well when your face is growing, right? Mm -hmm. Having said that, at any age, you can go to the gym, you can work out on your muscles and tone yourself up, right? And you can do that also for your face. So a lot of the people that we get into our clinic have actually tried Mui and they can't quite get the force they need or they notice that their tongue, like you said, Just is too small for their palate. And Isabel and I, we see that because when we look at the side of their tongue, we see the skull pit, mm. right? Yeah. So from your perspective, we have uh, changed this narrow palate that's V-shaped, dropping it down to make it more U-shaped, as mm. you can see from this article. Um, but in other people's case, they may not necessarily even have the airway problem, but just anatomically, they can't get that tongue where they need to be. Mm -hmm. And just this expansion makes a huge difference. So if you were to start mewing, um, you'll find that um, life will be a lot easier for you now than it would have been when you started with that kind of narrow jaw. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Great. And now that my tongue's up, I feel like I can, again, get so much more air through my nose. Excellent, excellent, yeah. yeah. So um, uh, I think 
you've got an appointment now with us in a few weeks to get your braces on. Mm -hmm. um, and um, well, you've, you've been through that once before. Yeah. <laughs> uh, things have changed a lot, a lot more modern braces. It won't be anything near the discomfort you may have experienced in the past. But then after we've lined up all your teeth, then the next stage is to bring that jaw forward, right? Mm -hmm. So what we're trying to do is change your profile from back here to being there. Yeah. And I think that'll make a tremendous change for what we call your mid face. And that's mm -hmm. why, uh, you know, people call this um, maxillary expansion, but it's a lot more than that because the sutures we're working on, I'll get Isabel in a minute to look at the skull and explain that to people, but the sutures we're working on are sutures far away from just the maxilla. We're not just doing transverse expansion, we're getting all of this loosened up and bringing it forward. And uh, that's what uh, uh, one knew just through many years of research and because he's got a very uh, uh, mathematical mindset, he was able to kind of show that, that uh, when we are doing uh, when we are doing this type of uh, work, it's not just on this midline suture that everyone keeps measuring, right? Mm -hmm. um, if you look at the maxilla and you look at the yellow or the connections, uh, it's important that we loosen all of those if we're going to get that true forward movement, um, mm -hmm. uh, what we call the magic of what I like to call the magic of the mid face. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to show now is in a very visual way, what are the changes in the skull in when we actually go through the NSC process. So Karina had a beautiful spit, as we can see, and what it does actually mean to have this bit in the middle of the palate. Well, the palate is actually two bones, yeah, and over time they fuse, yeah. So when we have kids, we are able to split that suture in the middle of the palate with a normal expander. But after a while, the older we get, that suture gets, gets harder to open. Yeah? That's why we need to use the NSE, which has four mini screws attached to the bone. And when we have a closer look to this skull, the yellow part of this skull is just one bone, which is the one we actually expand with the MSE. All right? And if you even have a look inside your nose, you can actually see some yellow. Mm -hmm. So that yellow bone is the same one we expand with the MSE, which means the, the, the palate is also the floor of the nose. So, when we do an MSE, most of the time the patients, they feel pressure, not in the palate, they feel the pressure on the cheekbones and around the nose area, yeah? yeah? Why? Because that's actually where the sutures are, yeah? The suture's not in the palate. Like, there is a big one, I know, but there are many everywhere. Yeah. Is there anything, any kind of pressure you felt? Oh, that, that's, that's really different. Yeah, definitely after I would do a turn of the expander, um, I would get some pressure. And it was odd because it wasn't always in the same place. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes, as you said, I'd feel it um, sometimes in the gums or the teeth. And then other times I would feel it in the cheeks or, yes, sometimes it was in the nose and right. it was a different yes. size. Yes. Correct. So it was always different. It was never painful, mm -hmm. but, yeah, I would describe it as a pressure. Like you could feel that there was just and something. Was there any difference on the pressure you, you were doing when you were turning the expander, yeah? Which mm. you're actually going to show me how to turn, yeah? Um, was there any difference in the pressure before and after having this bit? Ah, oh, that's a good question. Um, I think probably after the split, it might have been a little bit less pressure. Okay, makes sense. But, um, but I could still feel it, that there was times where, yeah, it was pressure in all in different spots. Mm. Most of the time, I would say 95% of the patients, yeah, they feel something when the split happens, mm. yeah, which is not your case, no, because no. Karina came to me, she was like, oh, I didn't even, I didn't even feel something was open. No. Nope. So you just woke up with the split? Yeah, I had uh -huh. a split. Uh -huh. It was only a little one, mm -hmm. but yeah, I had a split and went, oh, okay, obviously the suture's broken, but I didn't feel anything. And then obviously every time you turn it, it got bigger and bigger. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, one of the other things we have to check if a patient is actually suitable for MSC. That's another thing, yeah? MSC is beautiful, all the benefits are there, but not actually everyone, even if you want to go through MSC, is suitable for MSC. This suture here in the palate, over time it fuses. So there are actually some patients where 
that suture here in the middle of the palate is completely fused. So it doesn't matter how much pressure I would do, it won't break because there is no suture in it. Mm. So those cases, uh, we call them surgically assisted MSC. They have to go through a mild surgery to reopen that suture and then fit the MSC. Yeah? Uh, obviously, you were not one of those cases, yeah. but we have some patients, they have to have that surgery first mm. to be able to go through the MSC. Yeah. One of the other things we check is um, if the patient has actually big asymmetries in the skull. Yeah? We are pushing one side of the skull against the other one to get the expansion. Yeah? If for some reason you have one side of your face bigger or more densely or less densely than the other side, you could get an asymmetrical expansion. Yes? That's something you can actually find in, on patients. They had a big accident and they had many bones, facial bones broken. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So that means that one side of the face, the bone density is different from the other side. Yeah? Um, if that's one of your case, you, you shouldn't be doing MSC because you have high chances of asymmetrical expansion. Yeah. I have to say on that point that we are never symmetrical, so we always have some kind of asymmetrical expansion, but with the braces we can fix that little tiny difference from one side to the other. Okay. This is a sample of an MSC which I like to show to the patients when we have the discussion about the MSC. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually actually gonna ask you to show us how you turn the MSC. Yeah. Okay, so this is supposed to be the palette, obviously. So the patient turns the little key from the front to the back of your throat. Yes. Yeah? So I'm quite clumsy, so I was very happy that they have this great little elastic yes. <laughs> so they can hold onto it with your finger. Um, and then it does look like a little mini screwdriver, and that's quite helpful, I found, in thinking of what it might look like when you insert it then into the MSC. You actually feel that it fits, right? You do, and yes. it feels like, you can feel like there's a little bit of a, um, a groove that mm -hmm. it sits into. And so you can find that, and it just goes in, and then you just turn it from front to back. Um, I just want to mention that actually the patient doesn't see anything when they turn it. Mm -hmm. um, right? It's yeah. at the top of the palette, and yes. you don't really see. So I you're just kind of guessing, all. right, where mm -hmm. to put the key. So I always tell the patients, look, you will know when you turn it. Yeah. You can actually feel some pressure. Yeah. yeah? It's, again, it's not pain, but you know when you're turning it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So the MSC is always the first phase of the orthodontic treatment. Yeah. This is the bite. Let me show you. The before the MSC bite and after the MSC bite. Obviously, what we're doing here, we are worsening the bite. We're just expanding the top. So just to make, yeah, I just want to make it clear because that's something that people just keep asking me, yeah, what if I only do MSC? Well, nothing, nothing is matching it. Mm. It's completely off. And as you said, it's get harder. It's, it's, it's hard. Like yeah. nothing, nothing is, you have no contacts almost. No, that's right. Especially on this side, I can't chew very well at all. Exactly. And so this side is the side I'm trying to chew more on. So this is actually a picture on the day where we finished the expansion. As you can see, there, no contact at all. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's important to understand that the MSC is just the first phase yeah. of an orthodontic.